Today, I will be talking on the topic Ramapithecus, which is one of the very very important hominid fossil for tracing human evolution. The earliest fossils bearing the traits of hominid are those belonging to genus Ramapithecus. Ramapithecus is the most important hominid from Miocene period. In recent years, Ramaphytecus has been accepted by many scholars as the first true hominid. There are at least two dozen fossil specimens that have been identified as belonging to Ramaphytecus. Most of these specimens consist of teeth and jaws and they principally come from two areas, the Siwalik Hills in India and Fort Ternan in Kenya. So now, let us come to the discovery and distribution of Ramapithecus. The first discovery of Ramapithecus fossil was made by G. E. Lewish in the year 1932. It was discovered from Shivalik Hill regions of India. He dug out the fossils which comprises of upper jaw to a new genus and species. And he gave the name Ramapithecus Vavirostris. The generic name simply means Rama's F. Rama here being the mythical prince who is the hero of Indian epic poem. The species that Lewis chose was more meaningful for it is the Latin word which means short snouted. So, Brevirostris means short snouted. So, short snouted Rama's app that stands for Ramapithecus Brevirostris. Next, Ramapithecus fossil find was made by LSB Licky near Fort Ternan in southwestern Kenya in the year 1961. The specimen included parts of both sides of an upper jaw and Licky gave it the name Kenya Pithecus Wikeri. After his friend Fred Wicker at whose farm the fossil was found. Then the next Ramapithecus specimen was excavated by von Freiburg, a German geologist in Greece during World War II. The specimen was assigned to another new genus and a new species, Grecopithecus Freyvergi. So Freyvergi's find was complete, both bearing part of lower jaw, and at the time of its discovery, it contained all the teeth. That means all the teeth were found in association with the lower jaw. Next to the growing inventory of Ramapithecus fossil was a lower jaw unearthed from Miocene deposit near Kandir, some 40 miles northeast of Ankara in Turkey in the year 1973. The specimen was assigned the name Shiva Pithecus alpani. 
The spacious name of the Kandir's Joe honors the director of the Turkish Geological Survey. A major group of Ramapitekas like fossils has also been discovered in coal deposits of Miocene age in Rudabanya mountains of northeastern Hungary. They have been assigned to still another new genus and species Rudapithecus hungaricus. So Rudapithecus being the name of the genus and hungaricus being the name of species. All these are the important geographical distribution of Ramapithecus. A number of fragmentary remains of Ramapithecus have been discovered from Shivalik Hill regions of North India and Pakistan, from Turkey as well as from Hungary. Similar types of fossil find have also been found from Kenya, Africa, and at first these were referred to as Ramapithecus. So far as the geological pair is concerned, these fossils date from the Miocene epoch, that is 7 to 14 million years ago. The fossil remains of Ramapithecus from Siwalik Hills were first designated as Dryopithecus Punjabicus. Later, in the mid 1930s, Lewis assigned an upper jaw from Haritialangar, Shivalik Hill, India, to a new genus Ramapithecus brevirostris, that is Lord Rama's F. This species name is more meaningful for it is the Latin word for short snouted, a feature and characteristics in apps. That means apps have long snout, but this Ramapithecus bevirostris has short snout. On examining the Dryopithecus material, Simon in the year 1960 opined that the jaw of Dryopithecus punjabicus belong to Ramapithecus bevirostris and hence appropriate designation of the genus Ramapithecus was given. Louis Leakey in the year 1962 coined a new genus Kenyapithecus wikeri for the primate maxilla discovered from Fort Turner in Kenya which is actually synonymous with Ramapithecus Brevirostris. Now, let us see some of the fossil finds discovered from different parts of the globe along with the discoverer and the sites from where they have been discovered and the year of discovery. The first genus of Ramapithecus was discovered in the year 1932 and 1934 by G. E. Lewis from Shivalik Hills, Haritalyangar, India. And the genus was given the name Ramapithecus Punjabicus and Ramapithecus Vrevirostris. And after about three decades, in the year 1961 and 62, L. S. B. Leakey discovered other remains of the same genus Ramapithecus from the site for Ternan in Kenya and the specimen was given the name Kenya Pithecus wikeri. Then after a decade in the year 1972, Bruno von Freiburg discovered Geriopithecus Freiburg from Athens in Greece. Then, in the next two years, 
that is in the year 1973 and 74, Ibrahim Tekaya discovered Sibapithecus alpani from Kandir in Turkey. After about four or five years, in the year 1977 and 1979, Miklos Kerjoy discovered Rudapithecus hungaricus from Rudabenia in Hungary. And later on, Dr. Pilvim and co-workers also discovered Ramapithecus from Pakistan. Now, let me give the description of the anatomical characteristics of the genus Ramapithecus. The incisors and canine teeth of Ramapithecus genus were found inserted vertically and not in slight procumbent position as we observe in apps. Then there is little or almost no canine diastema. Then the canines of the Ramapithecus are not projected and they possess narrow faces. Then the next character is the dental arcade is rounded. The palate of Ramapithecus is arch is in men. They have flattened and thick enamel premolars and molars that appear to be adapted for heavy chewing and processing hard food stuff. Ramapithecus also had a canine fossa. It was particularly seen in case of Kenya Pithecus. Then the molars possess the Dryopithecus Y5 cuffs pattern. So this Y5 cuffs pattern is again an important characteristic of all hominids. Slightly divergent tooth rows. The tooth rows have been identified as parabolic by some and v shaped by others. Reduction of size of third molar as compared to first and second molar. The ratio between the sizes of front tooth, that is incisor and canine, and those of cheek teeth, premolar and molars, are roughly the same, which indicate human position. Self-like ridges are present inside the lower jaw of Ramapithecus. Large inferior torus on mandible was also observed. The maxilla was short. That would indicate a placement of the chewing muscles that increased the chewing pressure brought to bear on the foot being eaten. Looking the face from profile is orthognathus. So these are some of the anatomical details, anatomical characteristics of the genus Ramapithecus. Coming to the phylogenetic position of Ramapithecus, the fossil finds of Ramapithecus are regarded as most important addition to the knowledge relating to human evolution. Dr. Simon has attributed Ramapithecus a very significant position in the line of human evolution. Pilvim in 1968 supported Simon's observation on the human-like dentition of Ramapithecus and concluded that it is a genus 
ancestral to homo on examining the nature and extent of the teeth some scholar described ramapithecus as a weapon welding terrestrial biped ramapithecus according to the competent anthropologists represents the oldest known ancestors of human line in a review bear study made by conroy and pilbim a plausible interpretation of ramapithecus has been given as let shinozoic ancestors of australopithecus so there are different views and versions as to the phylogenetic position of ramapithecus is concerned just to sum up the fossil remains of ramapithecus have been found in africa and india they might have lived about 9 to 14 million years ago that is miocene pliocene border the oldest of these remains called ramapithecus wickeri was found in kenya the species found in shivalik hills of northwestern by g e lewis has been called ramapithecus panjabicus like dryopithecus this genus is also represented mainly by teeth and jaw bones the teeth display a number of features like parabolic dental arcade small canine small incisors and molars with flat broad and thick enamel chewing surface smaller to that of hominids the reasons suggested for this change in dentition are based on change in the environmental conditions the reasons where the ramapithecus lived were not merely forest but open grassland exploiting this area for country food like seeds might have led to this dental modification these anatomical features lead us to the conclusion that this genus that is ramapithecus must have been the ancestral hominid form it is here that we find the clear cut distinction in features between pongids on one hand and the hominid on the other ramapithecus is therefore the crucial find that contributes to the solution of pinpointing the earliest the earliest ancestors of man in the evolutionary line